afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's online talk, which will be starting shortly at 3 p.m. For those of you who are here early, thank you for waiting patiently. While you are waiting, we would like to share with you a short video from the firm. I founded the firm in September 1985 with the vision of seeking truth and justice for our clients and not just winning their cases. Over the years, the team has achieved many significant milestones. We are today recognized by the Legal 500, Asia Law Profiles and Asian Legal Business as a recommended firm in various practice areas. While we have embraced technology to make our services efficient and responsive, we continue to grow on the bedrock of meticulous preparation and hard work, for which there is really no substitute. As legal practice becomes increasingly international, we keep ourselves ahead of the curve with our relationship with lawyers from around the world. Our firm is a founding member of the Legal Lawyers, a growing international network of law firms in 20 Asian and European countries. We believe in partnering with our clients to protect and grow their business. We achieve this by holding firm to our values of integrity and justice while giving our best to deliver effective and efficient solutions. Instead of just legal services, we focus on developing great working relationships based on understanding and respect. The firm invests in its team and emphasizes professional development. We are keen to share our knowledge and publish our articles on our website. And we also give back with our corporate social responsibility activities. We cultivate a passion for the law and enjoy what we do. This brings out the best in us for our clients today and tomorrow. We regularly advise foreign clients, including many Chinese investors, and have a ready appreciation for different ways of doing business. In corporate matters, we offer relevant and commercial solutions, often raising issues that clients may or may not have realized before. In negotiations, we believe in facilitating win-win outcomes. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's online talk entitled Small Estate Distribution for Muslim. My name is Rachel Ong. I'm a pupil in Chambers with Marvin Kwai and Associates and I will be your moderator for today's session. Before we start today's talk, let me introduce the firm and what we do. Marvin Kwai and Associates is a mid-sized law firm that was founded in 1985 by our Dato Marvin Kwai. Our able team today comprises of 23 lawyers and a support team of 19. Dato Ma is today a consultant with the firm following his retirement from the Court of Appeal Bench in 2015. The firm continues its tradition today of working primarily, primarily with small medium enterprises, SMEs, family businesses and individuals. We are a full service law firm with a corporate department, a dispute resolution department, which includes litigation, adjudication and arbitration, a dedicated employment and industrial relations team, as well as a department focused on servicing the needs of individuals and families. Our practice groups are, as you can see from the site, indicates some of our focus areas which are supported by talents from both our corporate and dispute resolution team. Today's talk is part of our MWKA online talk series. By way of background, we have been organizing monthly lunch talks at our office since 2013, some of which were also broadcasted live. But with the COVID-19 MCO, we have moved online in order to continue Continue with our objective of sharing knowledge, raising awareness, and encouraging networking for clients, potential clients, and in-house counsel. This is our 14th talk in 2021 for our online talk series, which has been attended by some 3,000 attendees. Today, we are expecting 82 people who have registered. Please visit our website at mahwingkwai.com for more information, to read our articles, and to sign up for more upcoming talks. Before I continue, please be reminded that this talk does not constitute legal advice. In the event you require specific legal advice for your matter, please contact us for a complimentary legal consultation. Details will be given at the end of this talk. 
We have two speakers for today, Ms. Anis Bamat Sahaini and Ms. Sarah Kamali. We will conclude today's session by addressing questions raised on Slido. Now, let me allow me to introduce our speakers for today. Anis is an associate in our dispute resolution, individuals and families, and Sharia department. She is involved in advising on Sharia asset planning matters, such as drafting Rasya and understanding Fari. Our second speaker of today is Sarah. Sarah Kamali is a partner in our real estate practice group and Sharia estate planning. She is involved in Sharia estate planning advice, including advising on and drafting of Rasya, preparation and execution of Hiba and understanding Fari. To all the participants, if you have any questions, please post them up on Slido. You can access our Slido page by scanning the QR code or going to the Slido website and key in the number 619818. I repeat, you can visit the Slido website and key in the number 619818 to assess our Q&A page. Today's talk points are as follows. Point 1 will be, what is small at state distribution for Muslim and how does it work? Point 2, who can apply and how to apply? Point 3, benefits and potential issues and the final point, advantages of an early application. Ms. Anis will be covering point 1 and point 2, thereafter Ms. Sarah will take over to discuss the last two points. Anis, over to you. Thanks Rachel, thanks for the introduction. Um, if everyone can just hold on while I share my screen. Good afternoon, allow me just to say good afternoon everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, so today I will be covering what is small state distribution and how does it work and I hope everyone um, is ready to jump straight into it. Before going into that, um, this is the part, this uh, presentation is a part of our series which we have been um, uh, using to advise on Sharia estate planning. So for those who are returning to our talks, you may uh, be familiar with this graph which I like to refer to. So we've covered uh, previously that um, it all starts when someone passes away, the death of a loved one, and then we look into burial expenses and we've also covered wasiat and then looking into distribution according to fire aid. So this is just to help you understand where small estate distribution comes in because once we've identified all of this, um, the question mark comes, how do you go about actually affecting all this? So you have the property, how do you go about transferring the property to the remaining beneficiaries? So that's where the um, that's where you will hear administration of estate. So administering um, the estate of a deceased person, that falls under, we can say that are three bodies who have jurisdiction to deal with these matters. You have the High Court, the Small Estates Division, or we will commonly refer it um, to today as a JKPTG which is just the Director General of Lines and Mines, it's a division under them, or the Public Trust Corporation Berhad, or we commonly hear Amana Raya Berhad. So these are the three um, bodies that are responsible in administering um, the estate, and depending which one you go to, um, which one you go to depends on the type of estate that's left behind and the value of the estate. So most of the time, um, our clients come to us under this high court um, application. So for our focus today will be under the small estates division. Um, but for us to understand why um, you should consider this and why this may be something that you may want to um, resort to, we, we will go into um, briefly the application under the High Court so you can understand a bit of how this plays out um, in comparison and contrast to the main mode of administering estate, which is an application to the High Court. The first uh, question is, upon the death, is whether the person um, dies with a will or without a will. This will determine whether um, the beneficiaries will apply for a grant of probate or grant of letters of administration. So if the deceased are left behind a will, the will will normally um, name an executor in the will and this executor is the one who will apply to the High Court to get what is called a grant of probate. Um, on the other hand, if the deceased passed away without a will, then any persons interested in the estate to apply, uh, can apply for the grant of letters of administration and the High Court will determine who the administration administrator should be. Um, and the High Court also requires that an administration bond may be required. It, there are some circumstances where it's not required, but usually um, this is used to safeguard the estate because you, because until um, the final determination, you wouldn't know who's applying, who's, anyone can claim that are interested in the estate, right? So this is a way of safeguarding the estate. And once everything is settled, you will get what is called a grant of letters of administration. So this proceeding actually applies to both Muslim and non-Muslim. But um, if you are Muslim, we have this added, um, not like a requirement, but something, um, an additional part, which is you apply for a fire aid certificate. This is not uh, made to the High Court, but it's made to the Sharia Court. 
and it runs um, simultaneously with all of these methods and it will usually go uh, near here in the distribution order so it's related it's part of the distribution order where you would enclose this fire aid certificate and the court will um, determine accordingly so we will go into a side where um, when someone leaves a will and when someone dies without a will so if someone dies with a will he's called uh, it's called testacy and it's basically some when someone passed away with a valid will and the executors appointed in the will will have to make an application and the documents involved in this application are all of these so it's an application to the high court uh, you must file an auditing summons and affidavit and support and if you are represented by lawyers you will file in a notice of appointment of solicitors and you will also um, require an affidavit of witnesses this is um, this, this refers to if you look at the will it is obviously um, witnessed by at least two people right so you will usually get an, these witnesses to affirm an affidavit um, this will cater to situations for example maybe the witnesses may pass away or one of them may pass away before the other before the, the deceased and so you need this evidence to help you in your application and on the other hand is intestacy where someone passes away without um without a valid will and what they apply for is as we mentioned earlier grant of letters of administration so similar documents are required you require all of these um as previously but you have the added requirement of filing a letter of consent um administration of oath which is basically to say that you will administer the estate faithfully um and you will also have to have this application um you may have an application as i mentioned there are circumstances where an administration bond um, may not be required so you will want to apply to have this requirement dispensed with and then it goes on to distribution order where you will get the court to um, make a declaration and then distribute accordingly and come out with the distribution order and as well as a fire aid certificate so as this is where small estate usually comes into play um, usually when someone dies without a will because nowadays many people who if they pass away with the will they usually have catered to a situation where there's no question of remaining assets outside of the will um, so if you pass away without a will then you go into whether making an application to JKPTG or Amana Raya Berhad so the small estate distribution is an application to this to simplify distribution of assets below 2 million and it must it must include a movable property we will go that into that um, shortly because of the definition of small estate given under the act and below RM 600,000 if it's without a movable property so like I mentioned earlier the application is for both Muslims and non-Muslims but Muslims have an added requirement not a requirement but they have a supplementary document um, the fire aid certificate so that covers we've gone into the high court and then we'll so now we go into the small estates to um, division just to take you back um, what we were going through just now and so the administration of small estate is governed under the small estates distribution act or we call it SIDA and it's defined as an estate of deceased person consist consisting wholly or partly of immovable property situated in any state and not exceeding 2 million ringgit so from this you see that it's a requirement that it must include immovable property such as land because it cannot be considered small estate if it's wholly um, movable property only and the value of course it's 2 million and the act also defines that in assessing the value you, you don't deduct, deduct all the debts and all that yet we now move on to who can apply and how to apply so under the act any person claiming to be interested in the small estate um, can apply as a beneficiary or a creditor of the deceased and they may lodge a petition at the JKPTG the district land office where the land is situated so where the immovable property is situated so how you make this application um, it starts off with an online application you simply go to the website and it will take you um to the website will allow you to choose whether you're public or you're um where you're working for them as any government website would do so once you click this you click on public and you go to application of small estate distribution and it will take you to a separate window which is this part where you will have to fill in preliminary form a and you will submit this online but once you submit this online you will get a notification that you will mu you must accompany this with um for the particulars and documents and what you need is you need to submit a hard copy of the printed and signed form a um, which is dated and together with the relevant supporting documents to JKPTG so once you first fill it in online you will get a notification like a deadline which is usually three um, three to four weeks that you have to fulfill this um, timeline um, because if you don't um, comply with this timeline you may have to start all over again so what are the documents that you need you need the documents to support form A uh, before you go into the documents let's go into form A sorry for this so form A contains the following particulars that you will need to declare 
and you will need to put in details of the deceased you need to include your details who's the administrator you will need to identify the beneficiaries um, the surviving heirs you will need to identify the assets movable and immovable property you also need to identify the liabilities loans creditors if any and so this is a sample of form a so you can see at the top here as usual you will have the states you have the details of the deceased you have the details of the applicant so that will be you and you have all these lists of detailing all the mentions I, met, I mentioned earlier and so yeah so this is the second page basically where you can put in the hutang and everything and the applicant will need to have it signed and affirmed before commissioner for hosts so the documents that you will need to support your form a which you will need to send a hard copy you need proof of death so we, you need obviously the proof of death of the testator or the intestate um, you need the ICs of all the beneficiaries and the applicant so an added requirement of a birth certificate for, birth certificate sorry for those under 18 years old you will also need proof of marriage proof of relationship if for example you're training as a spouse um, you will also need copies of the title for the immovable properties or you need two copies of the sale and purchase agreement so these must be um, certified true copies um, from the land office and you need all of these other <laughs> further documents so you need a copy of quick run assessment movable asset documents um, basically anything that you will be declaring in the form A you will need to have it supported and the uh, JKPTG's job is to go through each and every one of these documents and make sure everything is in order to take you through um, the procedure once you have um, completed form A uh, and you have submitted the documents within time so this let's look at what the procedure is afterwards so from once form A is submitted referring to the online application and also the hard copy um, the JKPTG will then check your documents and during COVID it does take a uh, quite it takes longer than usual because of obviously restrictions and all that um, so they will check if there's anything incomplete you will get in uh, you will get a notification online and you will also get it through post that um, there's something wrong with the application so it will let you know and you will have time to rectify and um, all errors or if any um, are rectified then it will go to uh, it will be go it will go to the valuation of assets under the JPPH, which is the Jabatan Penilaian Perkhidmatan um, Hatta, or known as the Valuation and Property Services Department. And what they will do is um, to check that all the value of the estate, so all the all the properties that you have declared in your Form A, they will check um, whether this value does um, indeed uh, amount to less than two million. Um, so once they've cleared that, um, you can proceed. Otherwise, you will be it will, you will your application will be transferred to the High Court because it doesn't meet the requirement that it must be less than two million um so usually how we advise clients for this is even before we submit the form a we will always have sent the client to get their um, assets valued first and from there we can assess because otherwise it would be a waste of time um, and resources because if there's any uh, issues you will have to start again basically you would have to go to the high court and file in all those documents that i mentioned earlier which is the os affidavit and all the supporting documents for the application to the high court the the GKPTG will also be checking um, if there is a previous application. So sometimes um, some beneficiaries maybe they are not in contact with each other, or you know they just they are just not aware. Some someone might have already applied uh, for the division of assets and all that, and you may not be aware. So um, they will also have to check that the deceased person doesn't have an existing application before this. And if there is, then like similarly when we value the assets, it will be transferred to the high court or the application may be cancelled if there's a previous application and they will need to proceed accordingly according to the previous application so in that instance if you find yourself in this case you would either check the status of the previous application and go from there um, but if you're lucky and everything's uh, okay and after the checking and the valuation all is in order you will get a notice to attend hearings similarly to when you're getting notified you get an online notification and you also get it by post that you have to attend a hearing and you will be given a date and you will attend and usually supported by lawyers to assist you in the matter and then comes the hearing date uh, based on the notice and um, at the hearing this is where if there's any issues, if there's any contradicting claims, they will go through it and settle all these issues. They will check. And if everything is settled, then you can proceed to distribution order. And once you have the distribution order, you register in the high court. So you will have to register the immovable property to the land office because you, you want to transfer the land to the named beneficiary. So you will have to register this in the land office or if it's removed 
movable property such as the car or anything, you would proceed to the relevant body or um, agency um, in charge of affecting transfer to the property and all that. Um, but if once you get the distribution order and you're not satisfied with the, the distribution um, and the decision of the court, you can appeal. So it's any agreed party can appeal and only a court can order the cancellation or a hearing of a deceased small estate. Um, so I mentioned earlier that you have to attend hearing, but because you can imagine sometimes you have many, um, many beneficiaries, so not everyone wants to go, you don't want to go comfortable going to the court and um, attending because it's just not necessary. So what you can do is you file it in a Boran DTA, it doesn't stand for anything, it's just um, you have Boran ABC and then um, because if forms are amended, they have, they have like double A, double B, so this one's the uh, Boran DTA. So um, it comes after amendments. So this program basically, this form allows you to say that you will not be attending, um, but it will you will state your position and rights through this program, and the court will look into that program to determine your part in the distribution. So this um, this uh, form gives you options. So there's three options. Um, you can either agree to uh, pass everything to the court to decide according to the Islamic laws, to according to FARA 8, usually based on the FARA certificate, or you can make your claim that a part of the deceased assets um, should go to you, or you can fully release um, all rights uh, entitled to, that you're entitled to, um, to be distributed to whoever is named. So this is where it's applicable to Muslims and um, you apply for an exemption to attend the hearing because you don't need to um, attend once you've already made known and you've affirmed before commissioner for oaths through this program, through this form, that these are your rights, these are what you want to claim as part of your entitlement and then for them to proceed accordingly. So this is a sample of the borang similar to the previous one. It has the details of the deceased and um, the applicant and you will also have to list down um, the properties down here. It goes down further. Actually, there's like many jadwals. Um, they separate it based on movable and immovable properties and you will need to affirm it, sign it and affirm it before Commissioner for Oaths. Um, but the part I mentioned where you have these uh, options of which you want to claim, whether you want to claim part of the estate or you want to give it all to someone or anything, it's in this, um, this part here at the top right hand corner you can see you just strike out where it's not relevant so you have this option when you're presented with the estate and they will ask you whether so usually um in our experience it's like a, a head of the kutukagwe maybe kutukagwe will like ask the siblings or ask the you know ask the siblings or whoever's in the title um this is how i intend to distribute um, do you have anything to say? Do you want to let me do it and all that? So this is where it comes in. So that covers um, my part. I'll pass to Sarah to take you through um, the benefits and the potential issues. Thank you very much, Anis. That is a very long and uh, heavy, and you did it within, let's say, 20 minutes. I hope everybody's still with us. Don't worry, mine is quite simple and uh, understanding is a little bit more on not, not on process, but on the part where it's important to actually, I'm here to market how important this SEDA is. So Small Estate Distribution Act, the small estate is very important. You have situations, sharing my screen now, but while I am doing so, I will share with you. You have situations where I'm sure you have some friends or families, they, their assets are frozen for a long time and simply because it was not distributed, there's no will, there's no was yet, there's nothing at all. So, and sometimes one family member not be a, not agreeable to another family member. That's why it's very hard if we do not, we do not do any will. So I am I'm encouraging you all, whoever that's still around, who has not done their Muslim will or haven't done their will, when I say Muslim will because it's Muslim, so wasya, please do seek assistance to do so. I see that someone's asking for a repost. I will help you to repost that, Jerry. Just uh, give us a moment to finish the presentation, yeah? And uh, in fact, this whole presentation is going to be online later understand Jaylee, but it's okay because you will be receiving the slide as well but let me finish the slide will that be all right okay all right let's quite fast uh we'll go through benefits and potential issues that you may come about when you are preparing for seda 
Small Estate Distribution Act. So Small Estate Distribution, what happens? So there's benefits. Let me go through with benefits first. You see all these photos here? It represents the benefit. And I always think that photos help to ingrain the message better. So you see the first photo that I, uh, I share with you, a photo of a plant with a lot of shillings in it. That first benefit is that you can save up costs. This procedure of small estate uh, distribution through JKPTG is a lesser cost than the usual engagement of lawyers to high court proceedings. One, because you have the option of not engaging a lawyer in the first place. So that cost you can keep, that money you can keep for other matters that you will be using the money for in, in contrast to doing a high court matter whereby you have to pay for a lawyer because you can't represent yourself and then you have to pay for the transfer later. So if you do have the option, because trust me, properties below 2 million can also go to high court, no problem. But if you would like to save up costs, small estate distribution with JKPTG is the way. But you would need to make sure that the assets are below 2 million and there's one, at least one, immovable property so that you can apply for the JKPTG order. All right? Then, like I said, the second one, save money for other proceedings. Next is this hourglass. It's a time. You are benefited of time. The application to this order is within a year or so. If there's no issue, no no uh, documentation issue or check further checks issue with JKPTG within a year. Because usually after you submit, if everything goes well, it's about three months, you'll get the hearing date, usually. But if there is something to uh, further checking, they will give you letters or communication through the online service. But usually that's the situation. So when you already got the order, the application, the hearing goes faster, and there's no other appeal or anything like that, then after that, you can transfer the asset quicker. We are talking about times where it's not FMCO, yeah? not FMCO, not phase one, not phase two, not the pandemic, all right? So during this time, everything will move slightly faster than high court. Okay, next. You see all these uh, housings, if you can see on the photo, in the housings? Yes, that's the third benefit, which is you are able to transfer the assets. Assets that are once frozen can lead to a very difficult life for those who are waiting for the assets to be unfrozen. A husband that is the sole breadwinner or the wife who is, you know, having lots of assets under her name they might have assets that are frozen and their spouse or their children, if they're not even married, maybe their family members, their father, their mother, or their one sole heir of sister or brother, they won't be able to take up on the frozen assets to live by. Because some, believe me, some of these circumstances, we're not talking about situations where there's assets of more than 2 million. These are families who have assets of below 2 million. So I'm appealing to everyone out there, those who want to go through Small Estate Distribution Act, please do find out, educate yourself because this is the best way to unfreeze your assets. Okay, once the, uh, the application has come with a distribution order, the assets are unfrozen. You can transfer your property already. Imagine, once you've already transferred the assets no longer frozen, it is free to be used as is it intended. So please, try and consider. It might be slightly harder to do it by yourself. I know, because procedures and all, I know the problem. I understand. I have family members who are not lawyers too. Well, those who are lawyers, some of you might not want to deal with JKPTG, for example. We understand. That's why even if, let's say, you want to save costs for high court without a lawyer, you can still have a little bit of cost of lawyering for this as well, but it saves you the time and effort of checking on the documentation. You have someone to check for you, to push you for documentation, push you to transfer the assets. And who knows, that same lawyer can help you transfer the assets thereafter. Okay, next is that you see the beautiful path line here? That's the fourth benefit. The fourth benefit is that 
you can move forward. Once you are able to resolve all the issues of fire aid in a property and distributing the less than two million, you can move forward. No more bickering, no more property unused, no more, well, you know, Malaysia, I'm not sure if you've heard all this, but in 2015 or so, it was declared 60 billion of unclean assets. You know, it's a mixture of immovable and movable property, probably, but it's an unclean assets altogether. Why? Because this is people who do not know this, this path. So I urge everyone here, how many people here right now? I see 42 participants, whether it's just us or the law firm or any law firms out there or any of the participants out there. Share this knowledge out. Please, let's unfreeze these assets. Can we move forward? It's not only for the family as well. By moving forward with unfrozen assets, the government also collects the chukai and also stand duty to think of it, right? So please try. Okay, try to give this information out, yeah? And the beneficiaries can proceed with their life. No more baggages, no more thinking, oh, my father's asset masih lagi belum lagi. That my father's house in Negeri Milan is still not distributed. What are we going to do? Let me tell you a story. My family themselves, they had a property of my grandmother. It took four years to transfer. It's situated in Negeri Milan. Four years or five years to transfer. And the transfer was only been done because uh, someone in the family pushed for it. If I, uh, that person did not push for it, <laughs> if that person did not push for it, I am pretty sure that asset will still be remaining in the name of my late grandmother and late grandfather. And when that does, it will pose a lot more difficulties in the future. So that's your benefits. Yeah. Moving along. Let's go towards the potential issues. By knowing the potential issues, we are able to tackle them. So one, incomplete of documents. Why? Because you do not know in the first place what documents you need. All right? Two is appointment of administrator. There's bickering because there's no one, there's no will, there's no was yet. So there's a bickering of who can be, oh, I want to be, oh, I want to be, you know. No, I'm the eldest or no, I'm the one to take care. So that's one. And then we have logistic of family members. One might be in Malaysia, the other in another country overseas, or one in KL, another in Penang. It's very hard for the logistic of family to come together. Valuation of assets. This might be a problem too. You do not know how to go and value your property. And last but not least, unforeseeable circumstance. Incomplete of document. First, get the checklist. It's online. If not, try and Google about it. The documents that you need to have are the ones that Anis has mentioned just now. It's the Form A, which we will go back again so that everyone can have a look again, just so that people wants to make notes about it right now is good. I will reply to you no reason in a bit. That's a very interesting case too. Okay, next appointment of administrator. Remind everyone in the family or whoever that is bickering about administration the benefits of making sure that this goes on. Find a way to tackle this because this one, no one can help that family except themselves. So one person must be a person who negotiates well and be the voice of reasoning. This is just pure logic. It's not even legal. Logistics of family, yeah, this is a bit legal. You get to get Boran BDE. And then there's always communication of email and whatnot. But must make sure the Borang DDA is affirmed by a commissioner for oath or the rep, the notary public or the Malaysian com, high com, if they are overseas. Let's say Brunei, you know, Singapore, you have to go to UK, you have to get there, them to do that. It's a bit costly overseas, yes, but you have to get them done. And uh, usually they would ask for an English translation. Please do give them an English translation, but tell them that they need to sign and get the commissioner to sign, or notary, sorry, notary to sign at the same Bahasa, trans, uh, Bahasa form as well. Because the submission will be on the Bahasa form. GPPTG will accept mostly the Bahasa form. Okay, Valuation of assets. This is latest that I had... Uh, come across, you can contact the JPPH, as Anis mentioned, JPPH does the valuation. Before you proceed, you get the valuation of your assets either by getting a private valuer, meaning you get the laparan and whatnot, and when you submit with the form A, you submit with that valuation. 
but if not, you can contact uh, JPPH, right? When you contact JPPH, they are more than uh, happy to assist you because that was what uh, we were told in one of the discussions, right? I will come back to you, Agnes, on that question. Thank you very much. And number five is unforeseeable circumstances. JKPTG, they have a hotline. Always contact them for unforeseeable circumstances because more often than not, they might have a solution. Uh, unfortunately for FMCO, we are all in the same boat. No solution. Not for land office, not for JKPTG, not for law firms. We have the standstill and halt because we're not an essential service. So unforeseeable circumstances can be some other things that might have been JKP. And I can't even imagine what is it because all I can think about is this. But if anything else, you contact JKPTG, they will be able to assist you. Or you get your lawyers to contact JKPTG to assist you. Lah, all right? Okay, next. Advantages of an early application. As you can see, today's talk is about the Muslim part. And what is the Muslim part when non-Muslim also can? Muslim part is more towards the kasdaran, the, the knowledge, the knowing of knowledge. Because at the end of the day, we would have to learn that the property belongs to God. All our property on this earth is not ours at the end of the day. That's why we have the Fara 8 rule. That's why we have all of this. It's not only property assets. It's even your family members, everything. Even your life is temporary on this earth. So if you come to that realization, you will understand that you have to do an early application. That's one of the push factors for Muslims. But yeah, in Malaysia, we have a lot of Muslims, but the issue is that not banyak kesedaran, not many that is knowing of this situation. So if you can see back this, it's grant appropriate with, uh, versus the grant of letters of administration. The application, even how earlier, how earliest that you submit, you have to go through all these situations and scenarios, which takes time, costs. Whereas in the application to JKPTG, you can do it at the, how do you say? You can do it at the comfort of your home with the website online. You just have to, you have to have a scanner, you have to scan and then you submit all your documents. So now, the advantages of an early application. Okay, advantages of an early application. One is that death of beneficiaries. What does this mean? We want to avoid elak. Kematian berlapis, they call it in Bahasa. Means overlapping of death. In Muslims, uh, in Muslims, for a computation, if let's say a husband dies, leaving a wife, three children, one of it is his son, you would think, uh, uh, and the mother, you would think that's safe. Unfortunately, if let's just say that the mother passed away before the distribution is done, means you do not apply for the JKPTG, and you know it's below 2 million and everything whatnot. But what does this open up to? This opens up to the siblings of the husband. So, why do I say siblings? Because when the mother died, the mother's share, which is a portion of whatever far aid it was, will be have to be distributed to the children. So the mother's children is the sibling to that husband. I hope I'm making it clear. So okay, husband died, wife and three kids. And the husband has a mother. But when the husband died, the mother died, but not, not yet distributing the property to the mother yet. So when the mother died, the mother has children. And that children is this husband's family member, uh, siblings. So it overlaps. So the portion of the mother, you might not seem, it might not seem like a big thing. But in FARA 8 computation, you have to recompute all these numbers. The shares were slightly looking like, slightly smaller. Okay. If you do an early application, this can be avoided. One is, another thing is like how the benefits is, distribution of property. You'll be able to unfreeze the asset, you'll be able to transfer, or you can even sell the property off. Imagine if you keep on leaving it frozen. It's very hard, yeah? And this is what I mentioned just now, duty as a Muslim, in the rules in uh, Islam, property is also amanah from God, from Allah. That means if we pass away, our property is supposed to be distributed according to how it was supposed to be in Farah 8 circumstances, distributions. 
But if let's just say we do not do an early application, we might step in or we might turn makan or eat in other people's rights because it's already ordained whose rights whose. I understand there's, there's a whole situation scenario where the guy gets more than the girl and whatever, whatnot. Yes. But let's just move along, move away from that kind of scenario and imagine that you're actually eating someone else's rights. It's already there. It's already captured there that that is the right of certain persons and you did not do an early application. So you actually were not able to distribute it properly. It also connects to the kematian berlapis, the, the death, the overlapping death. And la lastly, you can deal with assets. So if you early application, the beneficiaries or whoever that's transferred the assets to you would be able to manage the assets properly. They can now renew or redo or amend or, you know, just prepare their wasset to mention or maybe he bought that property to another person, their own son or nephew or what, whatever or whoever or maybe a uh, wakaf to another uh, company or Islamic company or whatever that they decide to do. So an early application would be able, would, would be enabling this and that will help in the later, what do you call it? A later kind of advantages. I know in our 43 participants, not all are Muslims and this is not a class agamu. But this is a bit of the principle as this is a, the difference when you talk about wanting to get an early application in a Muslim perspective. So I hope you are able to grab that, grab hold of that. And whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim, just share that out. And remember, this application is applicable to everybody. Whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim, it's just a matter of a little bit of difference here and there, especially the Farah 8 distribution. Okay? All right. Now, before we go for the questions, Rachel, if you, if I may indulge helping out on the one Jared Leah, give me one second. Let me pause the share. Give me one second. Uh, I understand that you would like to have a look at the uh, form A, if I'm not mistaken, was it form A? Let me just give back submission of the form A account. Let me just bring it up for you. So maybe some of you would like to take a photo of this. So let me uh, share with you. I see your questions. We will answer them in short time. Give me one second. I trust this is the one that you're asking for. Jaylee, application process before the sample of form A. Yeah? Can you see? Is this the, this is the screen, if I'm not mistaken, that you're asking for application process. All right. For those who want to have a look at this again, I'm leaving this on for another 20 seconds if you guys want to write it down for those old school like me or those youngsters and hipsters and all those that embrace technology can just screen cap or take a photo so this is the first one this is from the form A submitted like how Anish explained very beautifully done Anish by the way form A explained all towards the distribution order all right and now we are going to the second page where after the distribution order you register the court, uh, the registration court order to the immovable property land office or any of the movable property and also if not you appeal if you, any of the aggrieved parties not kuasati or someone just suddenly turn up hey i'm not dead or something like that then can appeal you know <laughs> Uh, one of the beneficiaries says, hey, I'm, I'm alive, why am I not allowed? You know, I don't have a part, why? Okay, so they can appeal, so this is a part, all right? Okay, I hope you guys got that. All right, okay, so if this is good, we shall now move to our question and answer session, which will be passed on to our lovely Rachel as our moderator. Give me one second, and I unshare the screen, and you shall... Take over, Captain. Thank you, sir. Okay, everybody, we will now take questions from the participants from Slido. So you can scan the QR code to access the Slido page, or you can go to slido.com and key in the number 619818, and then you'll be able to post your questions up on Slido. Okay, everybody, I think you can see the list of your questions over here. You can scan the QR code to post 
uh, your questions if there are any. So the first question, if all the beneficiaries agree to distribute the immovable property to just one of the beneficiary, there will be a vesting order to be applied at High Court. Sarah, would you like to take this question? All right. Let me just read that again. If all beneficiaries agree to distribute the immovable property to just one of the beneficiaries, there will be a vesting order to be applied to high court. If this immovable property is, like I said, it is uh, uh, how Anis presented, if is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the beneficiaries, if let's say five beneficiaries and the applicant, one of them is the applicant, and they all agree to name the applicant, who is also the beneficiary, the whole of the property. They reserve to basically they relinquish their rights. Lah. So what you do is you borrow, you issue the borrow DDA and Anis bagi tahu just now. So in Anis mentioned in borrowing DDA, there's an A, B, C. The C part you can say that I Sarah Kamali relinquish all my assets, or I Sarah Kamali relinquish my assets of so and so in the jadual to Anis, for example. Okay, so in the jadual. There's a jadwal in there, the Boron did just now, uh, I showed that there's a jadwal down there, uh, that jadwal, you name the property. So all the other five, uh, all the other four uh, have to mention the same thing in the Boron DDA. If only one of them do not mention it, that means that person will only get that much. That other person who wants Farah 8 have to take Farah 8. He gets his Farah 8 share. So that's the situation so the best thing order will be applied to high court yes after that lah. but usually um for jkptg because it's below than two million you will get a borang uh, i can't remember the borang off on top of my head right now uh that borang is the order lah. h i can't remember on top of my head right now so sorry but there is a borang that will be issued out by jkptg that borang you take it to land office already you don't need a passing order because they will mention that this property is to be transferred to who that's enough thank you sarah the second our second question is unit to sucker has exclusive jurisdiction for assets up to rm2 million and is it possible to bypass by applying at court will the court order subject to challenge sarah i think this question fits you really well i think you have for this one Okay, thank you so much. Uh, you need to circle, yes, they have exclusive jurisdiction, but I mentioned this now in my talk as well. It's up to 2 million, but it's really up to the uh, applicants, participants. You are the participants. Anyways, it's up to the applicants whether they want to choose to go set a small estate, which is the unit Pusaka, or you want to go straight to the court and apply. It won't be up to challenge. You can still uh, post accordingly it's just that if there is a party that's not a party they still have to appeal they appeal and it's still to the high court so yeah yeah if i can add uh, it's like not to say that it's exclusive jurisdiction it's like they have uh it's an option to you that's why sarah was trying to convince you to choose um the cedar instead of the high court application because of the time the cost and even now um, considering COVID 19 um because court is always postponed and all that stuff it would have been better um, and coffee commissioner for oath as well are not around uh, are not um, providing their services so it would have been better for especially our clients who have adopted the cedar procedure now that they, they have their distribution moving though a bit slower but it's still ongoing thank you sarah thank you anis so our third question is in the greece milan the land all properties cannot be transferred to sons right only daughters sarah would you like to take this question i opened the pandora spots didn't i someone asked about the negris milan i know i saw in the chat group so all right, this is the situation. Yes, uh, there is this called Adat Pupateh, Adat Negeri. I am from Negeri Sembilan. Yes, I know this Adat Pupateh very well. And yes, uh, it is to be transferred to the daughters. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, times have changed. So some of the families do not follow Adat Pupateh anyway, anymore, and it's really up to the family members. It is able to be transferred to sons or if you go to JKPTG and you sign up the Boron DDA and you see everyone gets a uh, equal amount of all the properties, also can. Jalan. Okay? Thank you, Sarah. Our fourth question. Is it true that there is no checking by the court to verify on the deceased assets and the number of beneficiaries? Sarah, would you like to take this question as well? I wouldn't say there's no checking by the court. The, the application is always being submitted, but we are 
right now check uh, we are now speaking about jkptg and jkptg is not court yeah jkpt is jkptg is unit pusaka so they would be checking on their system and that's why like how anis has mentioned the situations they refer to a court means they go and get to a judge and verify uh, this is a uh, number issues that they will check but the seized assets that one i don't think the court would verify uh, reason being is because this is a submission uh memang harta pus unit pusaka even cannot detect properties owned by a person so you can't really if suddenly there's some other uh, you, you submit then suddenly you got one other asset eh there's another asset actually you can apply to a uh, second submission for that particular assets so you just reopen it and just for that particular asset to actually do the submission or transfer that's all mm -hmm. and verification basically uh, it happens during the hearing as well that's is when like you do rely on the court to check but people that are involved will come forward and they will make their claims if there's any if there's anything that's missing so there's like it's not just a matter of like checking documents records it's like the hearing itself is to verify like you can have these documents but the person that comes before you doesn't seem like he knows what the documents are or it looks like it's the first time he's seen it and stuff like that court will look into to verify the truth and accuracy of all those documents so that's a form of verification whether jkptg or in court thank you sarah thank you anis anis the next question is for you if the estate is below rm2 million and is partly immovable, can application be made to High Court and not to JKPTG? Will it contravene Section 4 of the Small Estate Distribution Act? So this is um, similar to the previous question, which is basically the choice. So just because it's uh, below 2 million doesn't mean you have to go to JKPTG. Um, you can go to the High Court, but it's just uh, that's where you have to balance the advantages and disadvantages. You're paying, um, you're paying more for the High Court fees and all that and the longer time and all that yeah, but it's um so you can apply to the high court and it's not um, it's not that it must go to jkptg it's options to you so we try to convince you that you should adopt the more simpler um procedure and um which is at the jkptg if yours falls under two million thank you Anis. our next question is if the jkptg only issue distribution order which is bar e then there is no administrator Will this render difficulty for the creditor to pursue action? Anis, would you like to take this question? I've actually never um, encountered this situation, um, but I would assume there must be an administrator. Um, th there's something you can use to rectify it, uh, whichever problem that comes across. Sarah, do you have anything to add for this? In order for JKPTG to have an order to be distributed, someone must submit an application and usually the submission of application is the administrator so you can't be submitting without an administrator you can't you can't click to the next page without them the first page in your my e tab whatever the website was just now that anis mentioned the first page is to actually submit the name of the applicant which is the this uh, the administrator so the borrowing e would have the name of the administrator unless if you are talking about maybe a uh, computer error or typo error or something else, then you have to rectify it with JKPTG uh, because it will render difficulty not only to the creditor to pursue action, but it will render difficulty to actually submit any transfer forms in any land office. The distribution order is not, is not complete. Yeah? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Anis. Our next question is, is the Distribution Act applicable to the deceased who has converted to Islam? Sarah, would you like to take this question? Thank you, Rachel. Good question. Yes, it does uh, apply as long as you can show that that person had already converted to Islam. There is a there, there should be a certificate as well for the conversion because in Malaysia there's such certificates or if in the sense of JKPTG, I think in this sense, if there's no certificate or things like that to prove, then it will probably go to high court because it's easier to discuss uh, the, the to send in uh, affidavits to say that he is a Muslim. You know, it does apply to uh, freshly convert into Islam. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Our next question is: How long will the order from JKPTG be out? 
after the end of the hearing. Uh, Anis, would you like to take this question? Um, just really varies. It can be from weeks to months, depending on the circumstances of your case, whether there's any um, difficult, I mean, depending on the assets and the number of people involved. Um, but if it's like a, normally it would take about around two weeks to uh, a month, two months. Thank you, Anis. Our next question is from Istu Sarah. Uh, can distribution of assets be done from Muslims to non-Muslims? Sarah, what are your thoughts on this? Unfortunately, for Muslims to non-Muslims, we cannot we cannot inherit from non-Muslims, and non-Muslims cannot inherit from us. But we can if there is a wasya. If there's a will involved, yes, that's no problem. If LA, if uh, matters of intestacy of JKPTG. It is not an asset that can be distributed from Muslim to non-Muslim. So there might be a collaboration or a kesinambungan with the newly convert. So maybe a newly convert want to give to their mother or, you know, the beneficiary is their mother or what, who is not Muslim. That person cannot be taking up the uh, Muslim's heritage, I mean the, the property, because they are not Muslims. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, well, we are on the topic of will. Um, so the next question is, what if the deceased has a will but there is no residual cost? How to go about it? Sarah, would you like to answer this one as well? If we're talking about Muslim will, we don't have residual clause. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure who this anonymous is. If this anonymous is a Muslim or non-Muslim, we don't have a uh, we don't have a residual clause for Muslims. Uh, reason being is because all properties that if there is uh, a balance of it after distributing according to Farah 8, if there is no one else to claim their portion, means all the portion, the, the, the daughter, the mother, the niece, this is a situation where there's no male heirs, there's everyone is taken their part and share, there's only one left of a person or a body that can take it, which is in Malaysia, by two months. So that's another story for another day. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Uh, it is now 4pm. We will answer the final three questions and then we will close the Q&A session. So for the next question, for Canadian Balapis, example just now, i.e. an old mother dies later, the final portion is determined as in before the mother's death or after the mother's death. Uh, Sarah, would you like to take this question as well? Okay, for this situation... We already, when the husband died, like the just now I said the husband died, there's already a far rate computation. So the mother's portion is there already, yeah? But because when the mother died, the distributed properties are not distributed yet, so the mother's portion must be distributed to the children, which is the uh, siblings of this husband. Okay, the siblings of this husband. So the portion far aid that they are talking about is the far aid portion of the mother after the death of this husband. So this husband dies, uh, the mother has a property, has a, let's say la, one six, let's say. La. So this one six, it's not as easy as one six, uh, guys, but just let's just say it's one six. Uh. So one six, and then because she died, this one six must be trans, uh, must be uh, further distributed to the other children. So there will be another distribution of one six. One six bahagi kan kepada ni, but you have to calculate in a whole. It's not that you just calculate this part. So you calculate the mother's portion, yes, the one six to cut, but everything must be in sync. The kiraan will eventually turn into hundred per hundred or something like that. Okay. So kematian berlapis for your information, just to share. That was a simple kematian berlapis, and it's already hard to explain. It can be up to fifteen kematian berlapis. I've learned, yeah. Which means the mother died, then the one of the children died, then the children's children died, then blah, 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 and then suddenly this the wife when wife married, and then the wife died, the husband gets it, although it's not supposed to. So this that is the kamatian belapis I'm talking about. So the farai portion might not look like a lot to 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 others, but it actually becomes a lot because of the kamatian belapis, and you do not know when it will happen. Yeah, so do a very early application, guys. Thank you, Sarah. Our next question. Uh, as you said that it is an option for the applicant to apply at JKPTG or the court. What if the court dismissed the application if the asset is below RM2 million ringgit? Sarah, would you like to take this one? You saw me do this, is it? <laughs> I know, I 
Anis can answer also, but never mind. I'll just give one word and okay, Anis can just add on. Okay. Uh, in our experience, and I've seen a lot of uh, court orders, so far no application is dismissed for below 2 million. Uh, all courts will entertain all kinds of, uh, because there's immovable properties. The, the issue is, if, as long as you have immovable properties, it qualifies to high court even though it's below 2 million. Uh, anything to add, Anis? Maybe I missed, no, that was my, that would have been my answer as well. Because our, our experience is none. We've done like um, applications to the court where some people just have like cars. Um, they don't, it, it's, it's never been a ground for the court to dismiss the application. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, Sarah. Our final question, uh, Sijo Farid stated that share portion of the four beneficiaries on the immovable property and they agree to surrender their share and pass to just one beneficiary. How to go about this? Um, Sarah, would you like to take this? <laughs> I, I should, Anis. Anis did the BDA form. <laughs> yeah. Anis, you have to take? Yeah, this one, uh, all of the beneficiaries would have um, signed to say that they uh, relinquished their rights to it. Um, and the court will just look into those documents, the Boran DDA, and they will give effect to this unless during the hearing there's someone that comes ar around to question it. Usually the courts will honour what the, the parties have consented to. So it's just important that each of these four beneficiaries on the hearing date um, maintain their consent. Um, cannot be like, it, it, can, it can't be the situation where on paper they say, okay, yes, they want to relinquish all their rights, but then at the hearing someone goes up and says, no, I, I changed my mind. So that's, that's the only issue that could occur. But otherwise, if they completed their forms accordingly, the DTA, um, you just go about in affecting um, the, the form as, as you would at the hearing. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, Sarah. So, uh, we, I would like to thank Ms. Sarah Hambali and Ms. Anis Mama Sohani for their insights. Before we conclude, I have a few announcements to make. First, you can sign up for more MWKA online talks using this QR code or logging in at the website. Secondly, please fill our feedback form and tell us what you thought of our talk. The link to the form will be posted in the chat box. Kindly follow or like our social media accounts. We are on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Fourthly, if you would like to speak to our lawyers, we offer a complimentary 30-minute consultation over the telephone or over video conference. Please fill in the form on our website. The link is also posted in the chat box. To our guests, thank you for joining us. We hope that you have found today's sessions informative and useful. Thank you, everybody, and see you at our next talk. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.